Hey what's up guys I'm Nitesh and in this video I'm going to talk about the code execution context in JavaScript and why it is important to understand it if you want your life to become easier when writing JavaScript code This video will specifically cover functions in JavaScript Code execution context in simple terms is the scope in which the code is running to further simplify things it is the programming resources which are accessible to the current running code these resources include everything from variables to properties and functions when our code is not running in another functions context then its scope is the window scope or the global scope but when a function is invoked then the scope or the context of execution will always depend upon how the function is being invoked also the context either in global scope or inside any function can be accessed using the this keyword it behaves differently in javascript when we compare it to other languages like c sharp or java now let's take a look at a number of ways in which functions can be called and how their context is going to be set first i will talk about the function context when a function is invoked directly whenever a function is called directly then its context will be the window object or the global scope in other words the this keyword will point to the window object when any function is invoked directly so for example if i have a property and let's just call this property as item 1 with the value of 5 and the property is attached to the window scope by using the this keyword when we will access the this keyword directly then the property will be created and attached in the window scope similar to this property let's create a couple of variables and i'm just going to name the variables like the property so let's name this as item 2 and for the second one let's use the let keyword with a different name and a different value now let's create a function so let's just call this function as my function Now inside this function I'm going to console.log the value of the this keyword so that we can see to what the this keyword is pointing to when this my function will be invoked and similar to this I will also log the value for these three things item 1 2 and 3 by using the this keyword and let's see what value is printed to the console Finally I'm just going to directly call this function so my function and now let's see how things are looking in the console I am going to open this page in the web browser using the live server extension right click on it select the extension and then open up the console press F12 so you can see over here that 5 10 undefined and window are printed so the first 5 is printed because the this keyword within this my function execution context is pointing to the window scope or the global scope because it is invoked directly and you can see that the value of the property item 1 is 5 the second 10 is printed because it is able to access the variable created using var keyword but the third undefined is because it is not able to access the variable created using a let keyword which has a block scope This is how the variables created under a block scope will behave when it comes to the context of the function and finally window is printed in the console because we are just printing in the console the value of the this keyword but what will happen to the context of a function when it's called as a part of another object using the dot operator in that case the context of a function will be the object of which the function is a part of so you see the connection here right the scope or the value of this keyword within a function will always depend upon how the function is being called or in other words it will point to the calling context when the calling context is global then it will point to the window object otherwise it will point to the object of which the function is a part of and is being called using the dot keyword To test this I am going to create a new object let's call this my obj and let's create this using the um object literal notation I will just add two properties let's name them prop1 with the value of 15 and let's create 
another one with the name prop2 and let's set the value as 25 and let's also create a function i'm just going to name the function as my func so this is a function inside this function i'm just going to log the value of prop1 using the this keyword and now let's call the my func function of my obj object and i am just going to comment out this function call to see what will happen to the console let's save it and because whenever we will save the code the live reload extension is just going to reload the page again you can see that 15 is printed over here because we are logging to the console the value of property 1 or prop 1 which has a value of 15 but what's going to happen when we will simply assign the value of my func to a new variable let's call it my func 1 and then let's invoke this function let's also comment this one out save the code now you can see undefined is printed over here that is because we are not invoking this object using object name then dot then the function name we are invoking it directly and whenever a function is invoked directly then it's this keyword is going to point to the window scope and because there is no property with the name prop1 the value which is being logged to the console is undefined but if i will create a new property with the same name this dot prop1 and let's set a value for it such as 50 save the code this time you can see that 50 is printed over here because now i have created a new property and added it to the window scope with the value 50 we can also supply specific context values when calling functions that can be done by using the javascript apis call apply and bind so for instance if i will create a new function and let's just call this as my function um, with fixed context and now within this function i am going to write the expression console.log this.prop1 plus this.prop2 now this function is there in the global scope and when i will invoke it directly then because the global scope does not has a prop2 the result is going to be not what we expect and if i will comment out this value 2 then the result is going to be undefined because both of these properties are not part of the global scope what i'm going to do is i'm going to provide a fixed context to this function when i'm going to invoke it and the context is going to be the context of this my obj object now to do that we can either use call or apply or bind javascript apis let's first use the call api so we can just use the call api by using the dot call after the function name and then provide the argument as the context and the context is my obj object so we can just provide this object name directly now let's save the code and see what is being printed in the console you can see 40 is being printed because it is the sum of these two numbers 15 and 25 similar to call we can use apply to now call and apply are similar in the sense that their first argument is always going to be the context their second arguments or argument is going to be the arguments that we can supply to the function so for example if there is let's say an argument with the name prop3 and we want to include this with the result which is being printed to the console then we will have to supply it when invoking the function so the difference is that when using call the function arguments will have to be comma separated but when using apply the function arguments will have to be within an array as a collection so to understand this clearly let's add another argument over here and let's add this one too to the expression which is being printed to the console now when we are using the call api then we will have to provide the arguments separated with a comma so let's just do that i'm going to provide the values as 100 and 250 let's save the code you can see the end result is the sum of all of these numbers but when we are using apply then these values will need to be within a single array save the code you can see the result is still the same so that is how we can use call and apply 
So call and apply are better suited for those situations where we have to call a function with a fixed context one time only. But if we need to retain a function with a fixed context without having to use call and apply every time, then we can use the bind API. So bind will accept the context as an argument and will return another function with a context. So for example, if I will have to use the bind API, then first I'm going to create a new variable, which is going to have the value of the returned function. So let's just call it new function equals to my function with fixed context dot bind. And then I will have to provide the value of the context as an argument, which is the my OBJ object. And now I'm going to first comment out this function invocation and we can now use this new function normally like just another function we can provide the argument values for prop 3 and prop 4 so let's just do that and now this is just a normal function the only difference is that it doesn't matter from where it is being invoked it can be invoked directly or it can be invoked as a part of another function but it is always going to have a fixed scope which will always point to this my obj object now let's save it and see the result. So the sum is being printed in the console. So the bind API is best suited for situations such as event binding or when we want to associate objects with entire components or pages. Finally, I will talk about the arrow functions. So arrow functions will always have a context in which they are created. Also call apply and bind don't work for them. So don't even try it. In any case, Arrow functions are meant to be used like expressions and not like methods. They do, however, provide a shorthand approach to create functions, but with limitations related to context setting, you have to weigh the use of them when creating them. For example, here is a new arrow function and let's just invoke this arrow function and let's see what will happen. And I'm going to first comment out this one. Let's check the console. You can see five is printed over here so we can access the this keyword and it is currently pointing to the global scope and as i have mentioned earlier call apply and bind are not going to work with arrow functions so if i will try to use the bind api let's provide the object as an argument and let's just call the return function directly but we will also have to change the name of the property let's set it to prop1 because it is part of the object which we are providing as an argument you can see that undefined is being printed over here because we cannot set a fixed context for an arrow function using call apply or bind so arrow functions have some more differences when we compare them with normal function declarations I have shared a link in the description which you can refer to to find more about them. So these were some of the ways in which context can be used with functions. Also note that there are some differences when it comes to context or scope in classes when we compare them with functions. We will discuss that in another video. And that was everything for this video. If you like it then place a like on it and also subscribe to this channel to stay updated with more such videos. For any questions, feel free to use the comments. I am Nitej and I will see you next time. Till then, stay safe and have fun.